Based on what everybody's talking about, you might think the best thing about the Ultra are the AI stuff, or the 200 megapixel camera, but after using it for three months, I think they're just okay and not really what sets this phone apart. However, there are many improvements that flew under the radar, and they do make the day-to-day -day experience much better. Here's an example. Look at it next to the S23 Ultra. You can even include the iPhone 15 Pro Max. What do you see as the biggest difference? With the phones off, the biggest difference to me is the S24 Ultra's display looks darker than the other two by quite a noticeable margin. This is because the new anti-reflection coating is just so much better on the new phone. And this is the best coating I've ever seen on a phone or tablet. So OLED screens have infinite contrast, but you really only ever see that contrast in a super dark room. In practice, the contrast ratio you experience is more like however bright you're watching the content over how much of the ambient light is being reflected. So in a brightly lit room or outdoors, a good anti-reflection coating is even more important to the viewing experience than the contrast ratio of the display. Here's an LCD display that only has 1,400 to one contrast ratio, but a good anti-reflection coating next to an OLED screen, but with worse coating. In this bright room, the LCD display honestly looks more contrasty and just better. And here is the S24 Ultra with infinite contrast of the OLED and even better anti-reflection coating. It definitely looks the best. It's almost like moving from an LCD phone to an OLED phone for the first time again. Combined with a 2K 120Hz screen that also has good color gamut, this is probably the best content viewing experience you can have in a bright environment. And even in direct sunlight, the display being able to reach 2600 nits this year helps too, but only very slightly compared to last year. Two reasons for that. One, the nit scale is logarithmic, so perceived brightness doesn't increase that much as the number goes up. But I think the main reason is that these numbers are rated for peak brightness, which can only be reached with part of the screen, and it might not even be for that long. So it's probably that the full screen sustained brightness for these two phones are basically the same. So yeah, don't read that much into the nits measurement. There are probably some HDR content out there that would show the difference, but in daily use, I couldn't tell that the S24 Ultra is brighter without having them side by side. The rest of the physical design is pretty similar to the last two years, which was a good design, but now it has a tiny bit more refinement. If you look at the back and the screen side by side with the S23 Ultra, you'll notice the curve on the side of the screen has gotten even smaller, so it's basically flat now. Some people like the curve for seeing notifications when the phone is facing down, but I always felt that it slightly affected the content on the screen, so I'm a fan of this new design. It has none of the content darkening, but it still has a nice and smooth feel around the sides. However, it's still super pointy at the corners. I really wish they rounded that out even just a little bit. Also, the sides are now titanium, so the design has somewhat become more iPhone-like. But unlike the iPhone, the S24 Ultra didn't really lose any weight because it's coming from an aluminum rim. The titanium is matte, and it does feel and look nicer than the glossy aluminum. It's also a harder material, so it's more durable. But that's not that relevant given that the other 90% of the phone is all glass. It is a new class this year, Gorilla Armor, that's supposed to be tougher. The only other interesting detail on the exterior is a speaker grill. It's now a slit as opposed to the little small holes. It doesn't really sound any different though. But I do like this new design. The rectangle grill just goes well with the blocky looking phone. So out of all the AI tools that people are talking about, not that many stayed as something that I actually use often, but two of them are very helpful. Before I show you them, I'm gonna go brush my teeth with today's sponsor. I've actually been using the Life & Wave Electric Toothbrush for the past month, and it's such a cool piece of tech. It's packaged like a modern flagship phone with some pretty satisfying peels. This toothbrush has a very clean and modern design, which is not just good looking, but also makes it much easier to clean. The handle has no crevices, so nothing will build up on it. And it's made out of this very smooth feeling ABS plastic. You can rinse it without worrying about water damage because it has an IPX7 waterproof rating. Other than the toothbrush, the package also contains a braided cable that snaps on magnetically for fast charging. And it comes with three different brush heads, a gray one for everyday use, a blue one designed for higher efficiency cleaning, and a purple one aimed at whitening your teeth. The bristles are soft and tapered so that it's more gentle on your gums. But what really sets this toothbrush apart is its proprietary servo system. Look how much the head can oscillate. At the maximum, it's 60 degrees, which really helps you get the up and down brushing motion. And this is by far the best toothbrush I've used. The handle feels great. 
the vibration and oscillation does a lot of the brushing for me, so I don't have to do as much work and my teeth are still cleaned effectively and quickly. Even though the Life & Wave just has one pressure sensitive button, you can actually customize it a lot using the Life & app. Like you can adjust the amount of oscillation and vibration you want. And you can also save three different modes and set a preferred brushing duration. Click the links below to get your Life & Wave. The AI tool that I use the most is Circle to Search. Ironically, the AI behind this isn't even made by Samsung. It's basically just Google reverse image search, but it's built in everywhere on the phone. You just hold down at the bottom and then you can circle anything on screen. The other day I saw a cute shirt online and I found it using Circle to Search. It's surprisingly accurate and I've used it to find lots of cute things I see online. Yeah, and it works here too. The other one that's been very helpful is the transcript. This would have been so useful for me when I was still in university. Imagine being able to just search for a concept you forgot in a lecture transcript. But now it's still pretty useful for meetings. It can even differentiate between speakers and it's generally pretty accurate. So you'll never forget what happened during meetings again. And one honorable mention is the notes formatting. It's pretty cool. My notes do look a lot better, but I mostly take notes on my computer, so I don't use this feature that much, but I do wish I can use it on a laptop. Besides those, the rest are less useful and sometimes gimmicky feeling, like the slow-mo video effect. It can be really cool at times, but the majority of the time there are obvious artifacts and it doesn't really look real. Here's a side-by-side -side with a real eight times slow-mo. I like the AI generated wallpaper, but sometimes it takes forever. So I ended up not using it that many times. I find the summarization features just okay. It often leaves out details and I think ChatGPT is notably better but I can see it being useful. If you do lots of reading on the phone as opposed to a computer, the convenience factor of not having to copy paste things into ChatGPT on the phone would definitely be helpful to some. I also thought I would use the generative AI photo editing tool more often. It's very cool, the interface and the concept are great, but the end results have many obvious artifacts most of the time. Just look at this. And not to mention the whole process is a bit slow. The translation doesn't seem to be as good as Google Translate, so it's not that useful to me. But maybe if you frequently speak with people in another language, the convenience might be pretty cool. And lastly, the chat slash writing assist are just not that good. It only spits out something based on a predefined set of single word prompts. The results are not that great. You can tell it's written by an AI sometimes. And most importantly, you can't use another prompt to ask for modifications. So I never actually used it. And something else to know is that the AI stuff isn't exclusive to the S24 Ultra. It's actually available on lots of older devices. And it's also rumored that Samsung will start charging for it by the end of 2025. I think it will probably be a subscription model because running all the AI servers is very expensive and they would need a constant source of money coming in to make it sustainable. I just wish that the circle to search can remain free. I mean, Google Lens is free, so there really should be no reason that this is part of an AI subscription. But overall, I feel like the AI stuff have overshadowed other great features in One UI 6, which are probably more useful in real life. First of all, Samsung announced they're doing seven years of software updates. That's pretty crazy. And you would want these updates because One UI just keeps on getting better. The 6.1 version now has way more customization options. The lock screen has more fonts and you can finally very easily add widgets. The always on display went from just mostly black with a small image to being able to display the entire dim version of the wallpaper. And now you can make it even more wacky by applying an oil painting effect, putting it into a heart shaped frame and then having the head stick out just a little bit. Perfect. The home screen didn't receive as many changes, but there are two new fun widgets, a camera mode shortcut that also lets you display a photo and a new animated weather widget. They also addressed another major complaint. In the past, I've seen people say that the Samsung display is too overly saturated in the vibrant setting, but too dull in the natural setting. Well, now the S24 Ultra's default vibrant setting is dialed back a bit. But if you actually like the vibrant colors, you can still crank it back up with the vividness slider. I love that on a Samsung phone, you get so many options and you can get even more with the Samsung app, good luck. And here are some of my favorite customizations in there. First, it's changing the pointer and shortcut for the S Pen in Pentastic. Now I have a shortcut to bring up my favorite game. Another one is adding backlights to the keyboard in Keys Cafe. Another thing about Androids in general is when taking photos and videos with a social media app, the quality doesn't look as good as on an iPhone. Samsung claims that this is fixed now. So let's take a look at these videos side by side. 
One is taken with the latest Instagram app and the other with the native camera app. They look pretty close in terms of the color and the general vibe, but strangely, the stabilization looks a little bit different. Also, the one taken with the Instagram app is a lot more compressed but that's just Instagram's compression. Even if you use the regular camera app and then upload it to Instagram, it will get compressed just the same. In fact, this happens on the iPhone as well. The Instagram app on the iPhone compresses the video to 720p. And one last software change that's pretty awesome is Google abandoning Nearby Share. Well, it technically merged in QuickShare. So now all Android phones use QuickShare. And QuickShare is so good. Not only is it faster than AirDrop in my testing, but the other day I was hanging out with some iPhone users and I could still easily send them pictures just by generating a QR code. The entire experience just feels a lot more friendly. Now we just need a convenient way for the iPhone to send stuff to Android, but that'll probably never happen. Aside from the great software, most people get the Ultra for the best cameras. And this year, the hardware sounded disappointing. Most of the cameras stay the same, and the only change is the 10X being downgraded to a 5X. But after using the cameras a lot, the 5X is frankly much more useful. The 10X was a pretty cool party trick, but the 5X can actually be used creatively. It's great for portraits. And this 5X camera is 50 megapixels. So even when you're digitally cropping in on it to get a 10X, it's still decent quality. It actually matches up pretty well against the optical 10X on the S23 Ultra. And when just in the regular 5X mode, it's by far the best 5X camera. Here it is next to the 5X on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which is 12 megapixels. There are more details here in the rocks and the colors also look a little bit nicer. And if we zoom into 10X, the extra resolution is even more beneficial. And for the main camera, it's basically the same lens and sensor as last year. Regardless, it's still very good. In this backlit shot, you can see it has more dynamic range than the iPhone. There are still details in the shadows. And in good lighting, I think it's ahead of the iPhone in terms of the color and the texture. But when it comes to the video, it doesn't quite keep up. The video almost looks a little fake here. And the 200 megapixel mode does work. Just look at the massive difference between it and the 12 and 50 megapixel but this is zoomed all the way in. When you're not trying to zoom in that far, the difference in quality is way less. So given the massive file size, the 200 megapixel mode is more just a party trick. Because when do you ever take a picture of a view like this and then later think, hmm, I wish this was just a close up on the trees. And interestingly, each of the resolutions seems to have a different color and feel to it. It's almost like using a different camera. As for the other ones, I like the general processing and the color, but the 3X and the ultra wide are still not quite on par with the other cameras on this phone. Although this Ultra's camera doesn't feel like it's breaking any new grounds, it's still among the best. And I would definitely take the new super high quality 5X camera over the old 10X. The same theme is also present in performance. The things they want to emphasize, like ray tracing, doesn't really matter right now because there are so few games that take advantage of it. But maybe in coming years, it will become more relevant. And the same goes for the increased AI processing power. Most of the AI features are processed by Samsung servers, such as wallpaper generation and generative photo editing. And out of the ones that are run on the phone itself, they all tend to run pretty fast and can also run fine on older phones. So I don't really see it as a huge advantage right now. But what is actually important is just the regular CPU and GPU performance and efficiency. And the S24 Ultra does surprisingly well in these regards. The CPU is 20% faster for single core and for multi-core and the GPU performance, both are around 30% faster than last gen. This year, there's allegedly better cooling, but it doesn't really show up in the test results. This may be because the new chip is putting out more heat. However, compared to the iPhone, it doesn't thermal throttle as quickly. But more importantly, the efficiency is so much better as well. Previously in my testing, the longest lasting phone was the iPhone 15 Pro Max. It just barely beat the S23 Ultra by 10 minutes in a mixed usage test of some gaming and video playback. But now it's not even close. The S24 Ultra beat the iPhone by a whole hour. I've never seen such a big difference between the latest iPhone and the Ultra. The new processor, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, looks to be a lot more efficient, especially since the battery size did not increase. And it's in every S24 Ultra worldwide, so you don't need to worry about getting the slower Exynos chip if you want to go for the Ultra. 
I understand some people are disappointed because only some of the AI features are useful and they also might become a subscription service in the future. But even if we take away all of the AI features, the S24 Ultra is still a very solid phone. It has the best anti-reflective coating and that combined with a vibrant bright screen just delivers an unbeatable content experience. The cameras, even though not much change, are still solid all around and the new 5X is surprisingly excellent. Ultimately, most people use their phones for content and camera, not for the best AI summarization. And the Ultra does those fundamentals extremely well. That's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed, give it a like, follow me on my Instagram and TikTok, and you can watch more here.